this morning on this uh, special uh, high holy day in the life of the church. We're so glad that all of you are here and that you all got the memo to meet here <laughs> instead of in the mud and the rain out at the park. So glad to see you all here. A couple of announcements as we get started today. The first is that um, we have our next new member class coming up this Saturday. So if you haven't yet made the commitment to join this uh, community of faith, we would love for you to come and join us and hear more about the ministries of the church. Um, you can do that actually just by signing up on the new member bulletin board that is just outside these doors. We'd love for you to be there. Next, we are in need of some additional volunteers to help us out with communion. Um, people who can do, do all sorts of different skill sets involved there. And um, you can talk to Julia Walker Jewel if you, if you want to give us a wave if, um, if you're interested in serving in that way. Also, you can talk to Julia Walker Jewel if you are interested in singing in our patriotic choir. Um, the rehearsals for that are going to start May 31st at 7.15. All are welcome, as you know, that's such a wonderful time of music. So if you've missed singing, that is your chance to do that. Finally, next Sunday is our baccalaureate service at 11.15, uh, where we're going to celebrate our graduates and send them off on their way to college and celebrate their graduation. And I believe Doug has a special announcement. Yeah, thanks, Julia. So uh, first of all, um, I just want to thank everybody for um, reaching out um, over this past week um, in the death of my father, which uh, happened uh, rather uh, suddenly. And, um, and I got the news uh, between services uh, last week. Mm -hmm. And I, I really want to um, want to thank uh, Pastor Julia for um, stepping up and leading uh, the third service um, without me, uh, and she ended up preaching. If you weren't here, she ended up preaching my sermon. Um, she didn't. She didn't write it, but, and uh, and I know that's got to be really awkward. And I just want to thank you for doing that, and for um, and the flexibility of the confirmands um, who were all confirmed again under uh, Pastor Julia and Pastor David's uh, leadership uh, last week. I just want to thank y'all for for that. And, um, and uh, if you have emailed me or anything throughout the week, I have not checked my email, um, and I'll be uh, catching back up on that. But, uh, but just thank you so much for the love and support that you've shown me. Um, I, I could not have done it without, without all of you. Um, it's been a tough week, and, um, but I appreciate um, so much um, how much you have cared for me. So thank you for that. Um, and then I've got a happier news, um, if, we can, uh, if we can change the mood a little bit. And, um, and that is, I want to introduce someone new to you today, and that is Unsu, Unsu Kong. And um, she is here. Come on up, Unsu. Um, this is, will be our, our new associate who's coming to us the 1st of July. And so... Um, <laughs> And uh, she'll be sticking around for lunch afterwards, so uh, you get a chance to meet her. Uh, say hello, and Sue. Good to see you. Uh, grace and peace on to you, everyone. Good morning, Rice Bill. Um, I'm so glad um, to be here to worship together, and I'm so happy to see your faces um, in person, finally. <laughs> um, I'm so looking forward to walking this faith journey up together and through praising God and living our daily lives as witnesses and also glorifying our guide. Um, so um, I've already heard about your faithful story, and I've already experienced love and support and hospitality from Riceville, especially through the church leadership. So um, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Thank you, everyone. Again, she won't be joining us full time uh, for another month, um, but uh, we really appreciate the fact that you were able to get away today and uh, be with us and, uh, and celebrate in our Pentecostal service. And of course, after the service, everyone's invited to go upstairs. We've got um, hamburgers, hot dogs, uh, cupcakes, uh, beans, chips. We're going to have a great, great time. Um, we're going to have a, a little early uh, uh, hamburger brunch. So, uh, so anyway, let's, uh, let's praise the Lord, all right?
Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Almighty Spirit, come. Almighty Spirit, come. Come, come, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Almighty Spirit, come. like this is a sign of our openness to the Spirit. Let's pray. Holy and loving God, we thank you for gathering us together today in your name. Lord, what the musicians have just sung, that is our prayer, that you would come, Holy Spirit, fall on us afresh again on this day of Pentecost. Enliven us with your Spirit. God, we pray even in this time of worship that we would feel you here with us. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you now to stand and join together in our opening hymn, which is printed in your bulletin. Spirit. 
associate pastors, and it's my privilege to lead us in our morning prayer today. Uh, as I pray, I'll be pausing during the prayer to give you the opportunity to lift up the names of individuals that you would especially like to remember in prayer today, and you can do that by just simply speaking those names out loud. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this day, 2,000 years ago, you gave birth to the church by sending the Holy Spirit to dwell in your believers. We rejoice that you have allowed us to experience new life. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our convictor, our guide, and so many other things. And may we continue to celebrate this day until you return again. Thank you, Lord, for sending the Holy Spirit here with us as our protection and provision. Thank you that we can have that power at work in our lives if we are only mindful of it and remember to draw from it. Please help us as Christians to be obviously different in a positive way to everyone we encounter and to reflect you and your love in our lives so that people will know that we are your disciples. We especially pray today for these whom we now name with our voices or in our hearts. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. You are the one who produces good fruit in our lives. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. And as Jesus taught his disciples to pray, so now we also pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We continue in worship now as we have the opportunity to worship God through our giving of tithes and offerings. The ushers will come forward to receive our gifts of worship.
it's time now for the children's sermon. If I've got any kids who would like to join me down front, come on down. Okay, we've got a good group this morning. Good morning. Hey, I heard that. Great. Yeah, I'm Pastor David, and I'm going to share with you uh, some things this morning. Um, you know, when I was a kid, and now this was back in the middle of the last century. <laughs> no, even before that. Yeah. No, it was 1950-something, actually. Um, but when I was a kid, we didn't have air conditioning. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly how I felt, and uh, it was hot. I grew up in South Carolina, not at the coast where we usually have a breeze, but it was hot, and we didn't have air conditioning. But what I had was we had this big box fan, and we would open a window, put the fan in the window, so that it could blow hot air from the outside inside. <laughs> I used to wonder about that, but anyway, because the air was moving, it actually uh, did feel a little bit, um, a little bit cooler. Uh, actually, I brought a fan with me this morning. Now, it's not the great big box fan. This is actually um, a little fan that, uh, that I have to take on mission trips sometimes. Now, I'm gonna turn it on. Oh, yeah, you got one like this? There. So there you can see the fan. Now, how do we know that the fan is working? Well, yeah, so these red uh, streamers that I've attached to it, uh, we can see those. Now, we can't see the air itself, but there's actually air uh, blowing out. You have two, okay. Well, maybe you're double cool then, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, we can see these moving though, so we know it's working. Another way that we know is we can we can actually feel the the wind, like you know, it blows our well, maybe not my hair, but it you know can blow your hair. <laughs> see, can you feel it? A little bit of, yeah, you can feel it. Yeah, okay, and you can also hear the the sound, if you hold it up to your ear, you can actually hear the sound of the air as it, as it goes by. Um, and you can also hear the sound of the, the fan. Well, today is a very special day uh, when many churches celebrate. It's called the Day of Pentecost. And the Bible tells us that on the Day of Pentecost, Jesus' followers were all gathered in one place. They were all in, in the same room together. And God sent the Holy Spirit into their midst in order to give them power to teach about Jesus. Now, they couldn't see the Holy Spirit. So how did they know the Holy Spirit was there? Well, the Bible says that they knew the Holy Spirit was there, first of all, because they heard a sound like, like a really strong wind. Uh, just like if you hold this up to your ear, you can, can actually hear the, the sound of the wind. And uh, the Bible also tells us that there were something really strange happened. There were these tongues of fire that came into the room and rested on their heads. Boy, that, that must have looked really strange. But they could see the fire, just like we can see these, these red um, streamers here when the, the fan is on. And then finally, the Bible tells us that they knew the Holy Spirit was there because they could feel the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit gave them power even to speak in other languages that they didn't know so they could tell people about Jesus who didn't speak their uh, language. And they also got power from the Holy Spirit to be bold about telling others about Jesus so they weren't, they weren't shy or embarrassed. 
So the Holy Spirit is still with us today, and we celebrate that today on the day of Pentecost. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but we can hear the Holy Spirit. We can feel the Holy Spirit. Uh, we can see the way the Holy Spirit moves in our lives. So let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to be our teacher and guide. Help us to listen and obey as he teaches us how to tell others about Jesus. We thank you for these kids and their families and all the children and youth of our church and their families. We pray your blessings on them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Thank you, guys. Well, good morning again. It's good to be with you. Um, I'm definitely feeling uh, the spirit today. I'm glad to be in this place. Uh, the music's been amazing. Thank you for the prayers, for, uh, for that children's sermon that explains Pentecost and the, and the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to read about the day the Holy Spirit came to the believers. We're in Acts chapter 2. It's a little bit longer uh, scripture than normal, so you may want to read along in Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd, excuse me, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for filling us up with your Holy Spirit this day. Lord, I pray that we might continue to hear your word, to feel your presence, and to live by the Spirit in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, my kids are back there on the back row, and uh, I don't know, Everett, if you remember this or not, but... Um, a few weeks back, um, we were looking at Spotify and how Spotify will tell you how many times you have heard a particular song on their platform. And so we were looking at what, are, what songs we had listened to the most over the past year or even over the lifetime of the fact that we've had Spotify. And my kid said, Dad, you're old. 
Um, what song do you think you have heard the most in your lifetime? Like on the radio or at church or from the records you played, what song do you think you have heard the most throughout your entire life? And I thought about it for a second, and I decided to go with this. And I think you'll know it and can sing it with me. We're going to sing it to the Christian church. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Christian church. Happy birthday to you. In Sue, do they sing that in Korea? Yes, of course, I can do that. Yes, they sing, they sing it in Korean too? That's awesome. So my question to you this day is, does this day fill you with joy and happiness? Are you going to stick around after church for our celebration? Because we've got great food upstairs. Methodist men are cooking hamburgers and hot dogs. Beans, chips, and cupcakes are there. We've got a playground to play on if the rain moves away. I've been looking forward to this Sunday for weeks. Unfortunately, we haven't always celebrated Pentecost with such gusto. Most years were more like King George III of England, who made this entry into his diary on July 4th, 1776. Nothing of any importance happened today. <laughs> Nothing of any importance happened on July 4th, 1776. The American colonies declared their independence that day. Of course, I guess it took a while for the news to get across the ocean to King George. Well, long before that, on the day of Pentecost, 120 followers of Jesus were gathered together in Jerusalem. Suddenly, the Holy Spirit filled each one of them and marked them with tongues of fire. And on that day, the Christian church was born. However, no historian of the time saw anything significant in that event other than Luke, our author of Acts. For many Christians, the events of Pentecost the events of God's Holy Spirit coming to this earth were kind of like what King George said on the day of the Declaration of Independence. Nothing of any importance happened this day. Well, today is Pentecost, one of the most important festivals of the church year. Today we celebrate the coming of God's Spirit into the lives of men and women. Today we celebrate the birthday of the church. But unless you follow the church calendar, you would not have known this was a major festival of the church year. Today is just as important as Christmas, just as important as Easter, just as important as All Saints Day. But for some unknown reason, this festival, this holiday in the church year, goes by almost unnoticed. Except at Harris Teeter this morning, when Kristen said that she went to pick up these balloons the uh, person who checked her out said, it must be Pentecost. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. The world <laughs> recognized it. <laughs> but for most people, Pentecost and the Holy Spirit seem like an unknown God. We know about God the Father, who was the creator, as we look at all of nature around us. We know about God the Son, Jesus Christ, who was born in a manger, who died on a cross and rose on Sunday morning. But what about this third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit? Why do we have such a difficult time getting a handle on the Spirit of God? Maybe we don't understand exactly what happened on this day. Maybe talk about the Spirit is just not as sweet as talk about a baby born in a manger, angels singing in the heavens, gifts being passed all around, and shepherds tending their flock on quiet hillsides. Maybe we don't get excited about Pentecost like we do Easter because there's really not that much to do. There are no eggs to hide, no new clothes to buy, no empty tomb. But Pentecost is important because it's now that the Spirit of God comes to the earth and is poured into each of our lives. It's the same Spirit of God which created the heavens and the earth that gives us Pentecost. This Holy Spirit is now with each of us. God's Spirit comes to us in our baptism. 
and remains with us as we grow in the knowledge and truth of the God who loves us. Yes, the Spirit of God and His grace comes to us and remains with us, constantly calling us to worship, calling us to service, gathering us together as a body, enlightening us about the truth of God, and continually making us holy before God. All this happens day in and day out in our lives. The Holy Spirit is quietly working in each day that you live, just like that fan was quietly blowing this morning. Which means the Holy Spirit is there with you when you take your kids to school, when you go to work or the store or play tennis or go for a boat ride. The Spirit of God is there in all that we do. The Holy Spirit brings its power into our lives in a very quiet and unassuming way. Kind of like a good pair of eyeglasses or contacts. If our lenses fit comfortably and do their work, we hardly notice them. They are there not to be noticed, but to enable us to notice other things. They're not to be seen, but to be seen through. I can't stand it when I misplace my glasses, you know, because not only have I lost them, but now I've lost the ability to find them. <laughs> the spirit inside of us goes about its work quietly like our glasses or contacts. Most of the time, we don't even notice that they're there, nor do we notice the work of the Spirit. But it's still there guiding us, leading us, allowing us to see the world through the eyes of God so that we might become people who look at the world differently, people who see the needs of others, people who see resurrection happening, People who see the world as a glass half full, not half empty kind of place, but yet still understand that there are things that need to be changed and transformed. People who are faithful to the calling of God to love him and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We are spirit-filled people who are guided to see the world through God's eyeglasses. I think I've shared with you before how I love watching the tide change every day as I uh, go from my house out and to, uh, over to Wilmington and to other places. I notice when it's high and I notice when it's low, and um, I, just, I just love seeing the change in the water. Well, I was reading uh, recently where several years ago, engineers were building a new bridge over the East River in New York, and they discovered that there was a wrecked hull from a ship that was sunk many years before that lay right where the center piers needed to be built. Powerful machinery was brought in to remove the ship, but it wouldn't budge an inch. And then one of the engineers had an unusual idea. Why don't we just let the tide raise the ship? So some strong cables were attached to the hull when the tide was low, and then the other ends were fastened to a barge above, and as the tide came in, the barge gradually lifted the sunken ship, and it was towed out into the ocean to a place that wouldn't cause any future problems. God's Holy Spirit is like the tide. It comes in quietly, it comes in slowly, but it comes to us with enough strength and power that we can now do the job that God has called us to do. There is a power, a force, and for many it is an untapped force in each of our lives that we call the Holy Spirit. Many times it's not dramatic. It does not cause us to do dramatic things, but it is there to give us the power to live out the kind of lives, to be the kind of people that God intended us to be. The nature of this spirit empowers us to live, first of all, pointing to Christ. The kind of life intended for us points not to us, not to our own accomplishments, not to our own achievements, but to the Lord of life, Jesus the Christ. The Holy Spirit works with our own spirits so that we might experience the righteousness of Christ in our lives. It is this spirit that convicts us of our sins, 
It shows us we're probably not as good as we think we are, and we need to beg for Christ's mercy. But it also shows us we're not as bad as we think we are either. And we just need the Spirit to encourage us, to nudge us forward toward healing and wholeness. It's that same Spirit who comes with mercy and grace, with the righteousness of God to wash away our sin. As Peter says in his speech to the people of Jerusalem, this is the spirit that God pours on all flesh so that your sons and daughters will prophesy, so that your young people will have visions and your old people will dream dreams. This is the same spirit that comes into our lives, into the church, to allow us to spread God's message of love to all people. This is the same spirit which points not to itself, but to Christ. The same Spirit which allows us not to point to ourselves, but to Christ. The same Spirit which makes the church, the body of Christ, the most unique organization on the face of this earth. I once heard a pastor who was active in his local Rotary Club, and at club meetings each week, a member would give a brief statement about his job. Um, I know Dale's a a, a Rotarian and a president here. I wonder if they do this at at your Rotary Club. But uh, at at this pastor's turn, um, to explain his job, the pastor said, well, I work with a global enterprise. We have branches in every country in the world. We have representatives in nearly every parliament and boardroom on earth. We're into motivation and behavior modification." We run hospitals, feeding stations, universities, publishing houses, and nursing homes. We care for our clients from birth to death. We're into life insurance and fire insurance. We perform spiritual heart transplants. Our original organizer owns all the real estate on Earth, plus an assortment of galaxies and constellations. He knows everything and lives everywhere. Our product is free for the asking. And our CEO was born in a hick town, worked as a carpenter, didn't own a home of his own, was misunderstood by his family, hated by his enemies, walked on water, was condemned to death without a trial, and arose from the dead. He said, I talk with him every day. The church is the most amazing organization on earth. And my friends, you and I are part of it. How cool is that? And not because we did anything, but because the Holy Spirit called us by the gospel, enlightened us with its gifts, made us holy, and keeps us true in the faith, just as it calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes holy the whole church around the world, and keeps it in tune with Jesus the Christ. We are the church power of the Holy Spirit was poured into this world 2,000 years ago, and that power is still present today through us and within us. This is why I'm excited to celebrate the power of the Spirit and the birthday of the church. It's time to open up to the mind-blowing, heartwarming, life-changing power of God The power of God that can invade the body, inspire the mind, swell the soul, lift our spirit, and make us more than we ever imagined. It'll make you young when you're old. It'll make you live when you die. The power and presence of the spirit will disturb, delight, deliver, and lift. I've seen it this week. When God sends forth the Spirit, the whole face of the earth is removed. When God sends forth the Spirit, others, excuse me, uh, everything becomes ordered into creation, uh, chaos. God just speaks, and the Holy Spirit takes the chaos and brings order. Uh, when, When God sends the Spirit, the Red Sea opens, and people walk into freedom, When God sends the Spirit, a young woman says yes, and Jesus is born, and life is changed for all of us. When God sends the Spirit, amazing things happen. Barriers are broken. Communities are formed. 
Opposites are reconciled. Unity is established. Diseases are cured. Addictions are broken. Cities are renewed. Races are reconciled. Hope is established. People are blessed. And church happens when the Holy Spirit comes. I believe today the Holy Spirit is present with us. And we're going to have church. So get ready. Be ready. Because God is up to something in this church. Happy birthday, church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for your power and your spirit, which you have poured out on the church universal. And we feel it here in our little corner of New Hanover County, in this beautiful place that we call home. Lord, continue to empower us. Continue to be with us as a church. Guide us, lead us, and direct us so that we might use the gifts that you've given us to spread the gospel to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Julia, yes. We're going to do a closing anthem before we sing our closing hymn. Okay. It's called, I'm going to sing and shout.
service. We're going to stand up and sing our closing hymn every time I feel the Spirit. And Kelly's going to sing the verses and we're all going to sing the chorus every time. And we'll start with the chorus. My Lord spoke Out of his mouth came fire and smoke All around me looked so shine I asked the Lord if all was mine Jordan River runs right home, chills the body, not the soul. Ain't but one train on this track, it runs to heaven and right back. lunch upstairs, so uh, let's have a blessing for the meal. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do feel that uh, you are up to something in this church, and we feel your presence, and we feel your spirit, and Lord, I ask that you will continue to speak to us, to guide us, and direct us by your spirit. Lord, be with us in our lunch. Thank you for those who have uh, come early to help prepare it, and Lord, may we be ever mindful of those who go without Lord, bless our meal, bless this day, and bless our week to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Go forth in the Spirit.